Hello, my dear class. It's nice to have you here. Welcome to class number seven, where we write some more code. <laughs> All right. Actually, one thing that I forgot to uh, to do last time is to show the validation error if we actually submit an empty post. Because if we click submit, if we open our console, we see that we get an error, but we're not showing it to the user. So let's fix that. Let's go to our app. Let's go to the. Make sure you have your server running. Uh, let's go to the post form. So here. Uh, we've already extracted the error object, so we just need to go under the form here and we check for it. So we'll say um, error and 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 that means if we have this error, then let's show a um, div with the class of UI. So dot UI dot error dot message. Let's tab. This is giving us an error because uh, we can't put two uh, sibling um, elements under one component. So we can just do this, which is shorthand for fragment. And we can just put that code back in. And now we can say, we can put an, a UL with a class of list and put our errors. And we only have one, so we don't need to loop through anything. We just put in an ally. And inside of that, we'll put error dot uh, graph QL errors. And we get the first one dot uh, message like that. And that should take care of it. Uh, one more thing actually here inside of the input, we want to um, use the error boolean to invalidate the input itself and make it red. So here we'll check for error, we'll do a ternary. So if, if error is truthy, then uh, the error is true, else it's false. All right, let's save, uh, make sure we have no errors. And I've said error like a bazillion times. All right, let's check now if I don't type anything and I press enter, there we go, we get post body must not be empty. Now let's give this some margin because that looks, uh, that, lo that looks weird. <laughs> All right, so here let's go, let's give this a style, just an inline style and we'll say, uh, put another object, we'll say margin bottom, oops, bottom, uh, let's give it 20, let's save, let's look at that, uh, even if you put spaces, by the way, it will still be not valid, all right, cool, that looks better, okay, so uh, actually one other thing that I wanted to add is the transition group, because right now if we just post something, it just kind of snaps in, which doesn't look that good, uh, semantic UI makes it really easy to use these like really cool like transitions. If you look at this leaf, how it shows, how it leaves, and we can control, uh, no pun intended with the leave and leave, uh, we can control as well like the duration of the transition. We're just going to use this group transition thing, which is pretty cool. Um, if we look, you just get transition from semantic UI and you wrap everything in a transition group. Uh, here they're using a divider and size and everything, but we'll just use the duration. So let's go to our... Uh, actually, no, in the home, so home, and here we'll get transition from a semantic UI, so transition. So right here where we loop through all of our um, posts, we need to wrap all of this inside of a, a transition group. So let's cut to this, and then sit here we'll say transition, transition dot group. And here we'll uh, actually we need to put it in curly braces and we'll paste it back. So let's save that. Uh, let's look at it. So if we add another one, there we go. It doesn't just snap in, it just shows kind of like it fades in. And later when we delete them as well, they fade out and then it, it kind of moves back. All right, so in this class, we're going to work on these buttons, make them actually functional and add like a delete button. Uh, by the way, just as a reminder, if you haven't subscribed, uh, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button so that I will annoy you with every video that I drop. I usually post three a week, so I'm not going to be that annoying, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's actually jump into the code. Cue the intro. All right, before we work on the uh, like button, I just want to um, make this comment button. It's going to have simple functionality, which is when we click on it, it's just going to take us to the page of that, um, of that post. And I want to add the delete button on this side as well, if it's our post, so that we can delete it. All right, so let's go here. Uh, let's go to the post card. So right here, this um, right here, this is the comment uh, button. We're just gonna wrap the whole thing in a uh, link, or can we make the button itself as a link? Actually, let's try that. So let's remove the on click, and here we'll say as uh, link, and we'll say two equals slash. Actually, this is dynamic value. Dynamic value. So we'll do back ticks. We'll do slash posts slash uh, the ID because we already have access from uh, to the ID from the props. All right. Let's see if that works. 
Do we have link imported? Yeah, we do. Okay, let's look at our app. All right, cool, it works. So if we click on that, it takes us to the ID of that post. Okay, let's add the delete button. I'm not gonna add functionality, but I'm just gonna add the dummy button for now. Uh, for us to have the delete button, we need to access the user because of course we need to, if we have to be logged in and we have to have this post as our post for us to be able to see a delete button on it. So here we'll get the, uh, we'll import the auth context. So we'll say import auth context from, we go back one level to context slash auth and we need the use context hook. So I'll say here, uh, use uh, context, context like that. And here at the top, we'll say uh, const will extract our user or destructure our user from use context auth context. Uh, so right here, we don't need this comment on post anymore. And here at the bottom, right, Actually, yeah, here after the uh, the like button, we'll do a, an expression and we'll check for the user. So if we have a user, so we're logged in and user.username equals username. So what this means, the username of the user that we're logged in as, if it's equal to the username of this post, that means this is the owner. So we need to show a delete button on this post card. So we'll say and and like this, that means if all of this is true, then we'll show the following. And the following is a button, so button um, as div, and uh, we'll give it a color of red, because it's a delete button, and we'll give it an on click. For now, this is just gonna, like, um, we'll just have like a callback, and it will console log delete post, like that. And uh, we'll put a, an icon inside of here, so icon, and uh, the name of the icon is trash, which is gonna give us a, um, a kind of a, a trash bin icon. All right, let's see if that, okay, so it VS Code auto imported those things for me, which is pretty cool. So let's save, let's look at our app. So there we go, so user, all the posts by user, which is the user that we're logged in as, have this delete button in them. But this delete button looks a bit weird, let's, uh, let's inspect it. Okay, for some reason this uh, UI button inside has some margin, some like negative margin on the side, yeah, negative three. Let's uh, just override that. So this icon, we can just say style equals, uh, oops, put an object here. We'll just say margin zero. Let's see if that fixes it. All right, cool. Uh, we can give a, this button a floated property. So this button right here will say floated, and let's give it the floated to the right, so it floats to the right. All right, cool, it looks much better now. It's floated to the right and uh, we can click it. And if you click it, it's just gonna say uh, delete post. Of course, we'll add functionality later. All right, so the like button, what I wanna do with it, I wanna make it into its own component so that we can have like leaner components, like I said, more modularity. Plus we're gonna need this button on the single post page as well so that uh, we'll, we don't rep repeat code across uh, components. So this is the like button. Uh, no, not this, actually it's this. Let's copy, let's cut the whole thing. And here we'll put a like button component like that. Oops, like that. And um, so here we'll import that. So we'll import, import like, like button from, I'm gonna put this in, where are we in components? Yeah, we're in components. So, so from the same directory, like button. Now this like button is gonna need to access some things because this like button needs to know uh, the use, um, not the username, it, it needs to know the number of likes so that it shows it and it needs to know the likes of this post so it determines whether this user has liked this post or not and it needs to know the ID of the post itself so that it would look in those uh, posts. We can pass it the uh, entire post but that's not necessary or we can pass it a new object uh, with just the ID the likes and uh, what else? Uh, yeah, the like count, the like count, like that. All right, let's save and uh, let's create this new component. So here we'll say new file, like uh, button, .js, we'll get a couple of things. So react and uh, use state, oops, not parentheses, bra curly brackets or braces. So we'll get use state. Uh, from React, uh, we'll need link. 
because uh, we could be not logged in and uh, we want to go to the home page if we click this or the login page rather from react oops router dom uh, we'll need the use mutation uh, hook from react uh, from apollo from uh, apollo react hooks and we'll need gql as well to write our graphql query or mutation from graphql tag okay so we'll say function like button it's gonna take the props that we had so from that we'll destructure from the post we're gonna get the id the like count count and the likes all right so here at the bottom we'll say export default like button okay we need to access the user here actually we can just pass it here i mean we can access it with the with with importing the context but it will be kind of easier to just prop drill it we'll say user equals uh, the user and inside of here using that user object we're going to determine whether we've liked this or not because we've if we've already liked this post we want to show the button okay our app is broken but we want to show the button like kind of filled with green otherwise we want to show it like outlined and as well if we're not logged in we want to show it outlined and if we click on it it takes us to the login page so here we need to determine whether we've liked it or not so first thing we use use effect so actually we need to import use effect so we say use effect and uh, our callback so callback like this We'll uh, check, so here we'll say if user, so of course we have to check if we have a user first, if we're logged in, and now that we have the likes, we can check and user.find, and let's find a like where the like.username equals the user.username. So here we'll say like that, uh, which means if any of the likes on this post have a username of this user, that means this user that we're logged in in or logged in as has liked this post. So we'll say, or actually we need a liked uh, boolean as well. So here we'll say const liked and set liked equals use state. Let's just give it a default value of false. And here, if this is true, that means it's liked. So we'll say set liked to true else set liked to false and uh, here we'll give it a dependency array of the user and the likes themselves if any of these change recalculate the value uh, here we need to return our button so so what we copied from earlier we put it here and uh, i think we're going to change actually we're not going to change much here this will be a dynamic value because we don't want to either fill it or not. We want, we need to determine whether we've liked this post or not. So here we'll say, uh, we cut that, we'll say const like button, button like this equals, and uh, actually we're going to put it here. So let's just put it now, like button. Now here we need to check for the user. So I'll write this and I'll explain it, right? We'll do a ternary operator and then parentheses. So if user and now if liked, so another ternary operator, and here we'll paste that back in. But here, instead of basic, we're gonna have the filled button because we've liked it, so it's gonna be filled. So else, if we've not liked it, let's paste that back in, and it's gonna be that, it's gonna be the outline button. Now here, outside of this parentheses, we do another colon, so else, if we, if we don't have a user, that means we're not logged in, so we'll have the same button, and it's gonna have basic, because it's gonna be outlined, but this should be a link to the login page. So here we'll say as uh, link, did we import link? Yes. So as link to, um, this is gonna be to slash, or actually just like that, slash uh, login. All right, I think that should take care of it. Uh, now one thing, of course, we need to have an on click, this like post, we need to have the mutation. So let's write the mutation down here. Here we'll say const uh, like post uh, mutation equals gql gql oh i misspelled that <laughs> okay gql mutation like post is gonna take a post id our server code 
and it's going to be of type ID and it's, that's required and it's going to trigger the uh, po like post uh, mutation and we'll pass this a post ID of dollar sign post ID and we'll get a couple of things and I'll explain later why we got those things and hopefully this time I won't forget to explain because I did this thing last time where I said I'll explain later I forgot to explain that thing all right, if I do that, by the way, you can uh, drop a comment and tell me, oh, you forgot to explain that and I'll explain it to you in a comment. Okay, so I'll leave that like that. And now we need to use use mutation to uh, get that function. So here we'll say const uh, like post. Here we'll get the error. Actually, we're not gonna have any errors. So here we'll say use mutation. We might have an error, but the error would have to be that our token is expired or something, and that has nothing to do with the like post. So we'll just get the like post uh, function. So here we'll say use mutation. I'll, of course, we'll pass it our like post mutation, and we'll have some variables. And the variables will be uh, the post ID, and that's going to be uh, the ID that we have from here, from our props. All right, that should take care of that. And that's named the same as this one, so that should be fine. Uh, everything here should be fine actually. Let's save all files. Let's look at our console. Okay, there's a couple of problems here. We need to get button and label from semantic UI. So let's say actually up here we'll say import um, button and label and icon from semantic UI react. Let's save user is not defined oh yeah we need to actually get the user as well from our props uh, like post is defined but never used in postcard yeah okay in postcard oh yeah okay so this is useless now let's remove that and let's save no duplicate props allowed in postcard line 30. okay so we're passing we're passing the user oh no here Okay, this should be as a link. Let's remove the div. All right. Okay, cool. So, oh, that's working. All right. So this one that we've liked is actually filled. This one that we haven't liked is empty. And if we click, there we go. It likes and it actually increments it. And if you notice, if we go to our Apollo cache, you will see that it's actually updating. Okay, let's make this a bit bigger. Uh, cache root query. So let's look at the first one, right? It has zero likes, but if I like it, now it's actually updating it. Now you might be wondering, how is it updating the cache without us having to say proxy the right query or something like that? But the way that's happening is because, uh, let's close that. If we look at our mutation, uh, we're specifying the ID of the post that we're getting back. So we're getting back a resource of type post and Apollo is smart enough to realize, okay, we're getting a resource of type post and it's got this ID. That means let's update our uh, that the post that we have with this ID with any of these fields these new fields that we've received so it does it automatically we don't have to do anything which is pretty amazing actually so we didn't have to write any code to change our client side state uh, one thing that I don't like right now is that if we like a post it kind of stays focused focused when we have to click away for the color to change uh, so let's inspect this and uh, it's this the UI button Okay, so the button has this color. So let's copy this. This is the normal color. So if we focus, it becomes this dark color. Okay, so it's this rule right th right here. Let's copy this rule. All of that. Okay. Okay, let's go to our app CSS. And here, let's paste that. And we'll say uh, background color. Background color. And let's take that color again from here. Let's cut that. Let's paste it here. Let's save everything. All right, so now even if it's focused, it's going to be that bright color and not the darker color. All right, so that's working. And so that's, I think that's it for this video. Yeah, that's it. In the next video, we're um, going to work. I'm not sure what we're going to do, either the delete button and the comment button or the single post page or, or maybe both of them. We'll see. I guess tune into the next one to find out. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye.